Southern crews in the creeks. Um, it's very visible right now, so we wanted to let you know um, how the progress of that work was going. Give you a quick update on the status of all the work that's going on, uh, the, the primary activities, uh, including uh, how we're managing surface water, our full site confirmation or double check sampling that's going on, and then obviously the uh, status of the stream plan. But we also wanted to talk to you tonight about um, a, a transition, uh, an administrative transition we're doing. Uh, moving from a uni what we call unified command group into a multi-agency coordination uh, group. And we'll explain what that means in a second. So very briefly, again, as I mentioned, the, the work uh, items that are going on, first, full site confirmation or characterization sampling is continuing. We're about 60% through that process. On the screen, uh, the, the bolded colors that you see around the train tracks are areas where samples have already been collected. Uh, surface samples collected and surface at intervals through um, a geoprobe that's punched into the ground that collect uh, samples at various depths. Uh, they're uh, primarily being uh, analyzed for volatile organic compounds, but in certain areas uh, we're um, analyzing for other compounds of interest. Uh, a couple areas we're uh, analyzing for dioxins and furans. Some of the areas we're uh, analyzing for PFAS compounds uh, based on some of the firefighting efforts that happened. And uh, in many of the areas we're uh, analyzing for semi volatile organic or polyaromatic hydrocarbons. <coughs> so that process is a little bit more than 60% complete. Um, the areas that are lightly shaded, the areas around the storage tank, areas uh, south of Tagra, the areas up near the water treatment system, um, up near Martin Street, those areas have not been sampled yet. We bring this to your attention because you're going to see that Geopro machine um, absent um, after about another month. The reason for that is we can't do the final confirmation sampling on those areas where those water treatment vessels are until those water treatment vessels are gone. And we'll, we'll explain here in a second when we expect that to happen. And once those, those are gone, then we'll go in, uh, do the same process, collect surface samples and collect samples at various steps in the uh, In the streams, uh, again, it's very visible right now. Uh, you can see the uh, stream cleanup efforts. You know, if you walk, uh, uh, last week, if you're walking along Tiger Road, you could hear what we call uh, the super sucker <laughs> or the um, or the guzzler, uh, is, is you have, that's the very loud, noisy machine uh, that's um, uh, uh, agitating sediment and uh, bringing the oil sheen up so that it can be uh, removed and, uh, uh, and contained. Um, and those, uh, that big yellow hose that you see in that first picture is that, uh, that, uh, that super sucker or that guzzler. Um, the, uh, the general operations are doing heavy agitation of the sediments uh, along the edges of the banks of the, uh, the channel and also in the, uh, in the channel itself, turning over rocks, getting, you know, finding anywhere machines being produced, bring it to the surface, collect it. Um, once we get down to what we call uh, light sheen or no sheen in these areas, we let that area sit for about a day. Then we go back and we agitate those sediments again to confirm that we don't have any heavy or what we call medium sheens. And once that's done, then we clear that area. So far, um, the, the areas that have been cleared are the areas with green dots. So from the derailment site uh, to the west, um, all the sulfur run up to just past this building uh, have been uh, cleaned and cleared. Interestingly, last week, uh, in this area, you heard, you, you heard those loud noises uh, just over there by the car wash. Uh, that was one of the areas where we saw some of the heaviest sheeting coming up from the sediments during uh, during our operations. Uh, we expected that. Um, that was one of the areas uh, during our assessment in the summertime, last summer, where we actually saw some low-level volatile organics, meaning that there were still some uh, derailment-related uh, volatile organics, some signatures from the derailment uh, in that location. So, so that was not a surprise to us that that area was a heavier uh, sheet-producing area. Uh, that area is done. 
We have now moved on uh, to uh, the area uh, close to West Street over here, uh, just west of this area. Um, uh, the residents in that area are probably going to hear some loud noises at least in the morning tomorrow uh, from that uh, from that particular machine. Uh, but we, we think we'll be out of that area uh, tomorrow. Um, rain is always a contingency. Um, if you know we don't get down to uh, minimal or no sheeting, then we'll have to you know, spend a few days in that area. But as you can also see, uh, past that blue dot, which is where we're, where we're currently working, all those purple dots moving down in the west of the run is uh, where the operation is going to move, be moving next. And again, depending on weather, depending on the amount of sheen uh, that is generated uh, and how long it takes us in each one of those target areas uh, will determine how long this, this, uh, this part of the project lasts. We think, Chris, uh, about another three weeks? Probably two, three weeks, depending on yeah. the weather. And, you know, it's really, it's based on what we see in this ring. You know, it's not a timeline based, it's, it's a, a conditions result based. If we're not getting the cleaning goal, we don't reach the cleaning goal that we need, what we want, we're just going to keep cleaning until we get it. So that's where it is. Uh, we're hoping it's two, three weeks, but if it's, we're not getting our goal, it'll take longer. Yeah. Very good. And uh, the, the, the important piece of this is what happens after we're done. Uh, so after we're done, uh, the next step is to go uh, back all the way back to the derailment site, start working to create every 25 feet agitating sediment uh, at, you know, within the stream channel itself and at the edges of the stream channel to see if we can generate sheet. There are a few areas up on Sulphur Run that do require some more attention. Um, uh, those areas, if uh, uh, you're walking along the street, you'll see them uh, cordoned off with a, a containment boom and sorbent boom. Um, we know uh, those those may those may take a different operation other than this this work that we're doing now to address. So so stay tuned on, on uh, more updates on those areas. But there are only a couple of those areas. The rest the rest of the, the channel is cleaning up very nicely. But at, when we do this reassessment, there will also be another round of sampling. There are over 20 locations uh, that we are going to resample to see how the, the uh, that the system is improving over time. Um, these are uh, same samples were collected last summer, again in the fall, and then you know again uh, this summer. So, uh, so we'll have a good body of uh, data uh, to, to compare. Um, more, most importantly, that sheeting, uh, which gives us uh, the bulk of our authority uh, to order this work, um, is we, it, it is significant. Just to add that real quick, that sure. sampling can be sediment and water, so we right. want to make sure that both of those environments are looking good. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to surface water management. Uh, back in March, um, we reported to you that um, some of the ditch areas were going to be reopened. Uh, so um, the update on that is, is uh, the areas in green that you see on this picture, again, uh, uh, the, the, the derailment um, incident um, just, to the, uh, just to the right uh, or just to the east of those, uh, those current green areas. Those green areas have been cleared, uh, they've been sampled, <laughs> Um, we don't see any contaminants of concern um, in those areas, so they've been real. Uh, that doesn't mean that the work in those areas are done. There's still a significant amount of restoration work that has to happen uh, to make sure that uh, those ditches and that land area doesn't erode. Uh, but uh, but they are now uh, they already are now flowing water through those areas in, in the salt water. Those yellow areas uh, are areas that we believe are done, but we don't have the final analytical data to demonstrate that. So. Uh, again, we just wanted to update you as to where we were in those areas. And again, uh, many of those areas remaining are areas where uh, the, uh, all those tanks uh, are still sitting. All those, those containment vessels south of the Taggart and those containment vessels north of the tracks. Again, that, those areas are going to continue to have to manage until um, uh, all that work is done and we can, we can remove, uh, uh, we can verify this clean and then remove those vessels. So it's going to be a little while and we'll show you a project timeline here in a minute. Anything to add to this, Chris? I mean, that's, that's really too much. It is. All the sampling here is we sample the soil, and we get confirmation that we're seeing not, you know, not seeing ground impact from in the soil. After that, we get cleanings, and then we sample the water at the off there. So again, it's making sure the soil and the water are clear. Once those both pass, then we let water flow through it. <clears throat> and the water is stormwater. You know, it's whatever rain's hitting the ground, it's flowing off here. We're just restoring the flow that was here before the derailment, so it's getting it back to normal. Okay. That's that. Um, and then again, as I mentioned uh, several times now, uh, those uh, what we call the CID tanks are the small 150,000 gallon tanks, the big blue tanks, uh, the <coughs> 1 million gallon tanks, and all those storage tanks out of Taggart. Uh, those will, once everything is cleared, then we can remove those and then we can verify that the land underneath of those, the 
locations for uh, that clean or require more work depending on how the sample is also. Before we jump ahead on that, so there's something I've heard uh, come up several times, you know, a rumor that is out there, especially around the, the treatment plants in the big group. We are not leaving the treatment plant here when we are done. Once we reach our goal, the oil is cleaned up, the water is fine. Once we, we, we're not really using that plant right now. That is going to leave. That big white uh, tent is going to come down. All the, we're already shipping equipment off. Now we might see trucks going to parts of that plant. So we're not using it. We're already shipping it off. We're not leaving the treatment plant here. So when we're done, we're not going to be bringing water in from somewhere else to treat it to discharge. When we're done here, we're going to confirm everything cleaned up. All that inscription is going to be gone. You won't have that white tent on the hill. You're not going to have a blue tank on the hill. That's kind of what we did before. We're not going to be bringing waste to town. We're cleaning things up and making sure things go away. Uh, timeline. Uh, so, as we mentioned, the, uh, the creek, uh, so I know these letters are hard to resolve. Uh, the creek assessment cleanup is going to continue in the June. Uh, we anticipate uh, the, the cleanup and then the uh, confirmation sampling uh, and uh, qualitative and quantitative uh, sheet assessment will be done uh, sometime mid-June, maybe close to July. Uh, again, it's weather dependent. Um, uh, we put a placeholder in there for when we believe that a multi-agency coordination group will, um, will start. We'll talk about that in a second. And then uh, site restoration, that'll probably take us into October. Uh, again, uh, weather dependent. Uh, then demobilization all the way up to November or so. And then uh, there, there's going to be um, a communications work. Um, after this is all over, we're not going away. Um, there are a, a lot of long-term activities that are still being planned out, long-term monitoring, long-term sampling uh, for drinking water and so forth. We'll brief you all on that when the time is right. But um, uh, we'll, be, we'll be continuing to uh, roll with our current communication strategy as, as uh, you know, to add to that, you know, we've got our new office <coughs> up here in the you know, across the track. We moved out of the one over here on the, um, the uh, we're there. We're going to be there for a while. So they're finishing out, they're building out. I think we need to put a, a brick facing on the front of it. But guys have already moved into that office. That's where we're going to be for a long time. Okay, so let's talk about what this unified command and uh, multi-agency coordination thing means. For you, it really means nothing. <laughs> Nothing's going to change as far as you're concerned. That, uh, it, this, it, the reason we wanted to bring it to your attention is because you're going to hear these terms. And you know the biggest challenge in any big situation is communication. So when you hear somebody talking about a map, you'll know what that is. Unify, a unified command structure, which you see on the wall, is uh, the, the basic structure that we use to manage an emergency response. Typically, we get out of the structure within a couple weeks to a couple months. This one, because of the, uh, uh, the attention uh, and um, uh, the nature of this incident, we kept this uh, in place uh, for 15 months, uh, again, which is, uh, which is the exception model. So when we typically do a, a cleanup, we had a, a ha you identified a hazardous waste site in your community, we got called in to, uh, to manage it or clean it up or, uh, or direct a responsible party to clean it up. We would do something like this, a multi-agency coordination. Basically managing a project under our, uh, our uh, CERCLA, uh, Clean Water Act authorities, uh, between uh, the regulated, regulating agencies, in this case, the US EPA and Ohio EPA, uh, and in this, also in this case, uh, we have a responsible party, which is normal. So, and we manage our project. And then we coordinate with our, um, our um, applicable uh, stakeholders. Uh, and, and again, in this case, the unified command members, US EPA, Ohio EPA, Columbiana County EMA, uh, the Village of East Palestine, and Norfolk Southern are those, uh, those unified command members, which now become that multi-agency coordination group. So instead of UC, you're going to hear MAC. That, that's really the only change for you. But the one key that I think is going to be important for you to understand is we will adjust uh, our joint information center, where we, we, we funnel all information uh, to the public, uh, to the community. Um, that, some of that will slightly change. Instead of uh, doing that JIC update every week, it may turn into every other week. Uh, instead of the um, a unified command members meeting three days a week, we may only meet one day. So again, that's nothing that you will notice, uh, but, it, but it's just an organizational change for us. So we just wanted to kind of let you know what the nomenclature sounded like, what the words were, and um, when you hear us talk about math, that's all. So that's all we have. Um, any questions? Do we have any update on the leak? 
Shamu tank leak. Shamu. Milling down. Milling down water. Tank that's leaking. Well, it was leaking. What's the Shamu tank? The big milling, big blue tanks, oh, you guys. Blue tanks. Yeah. Sorry, not familiar with the terms. Okay, that's, that's yeah. what everybody calls well, them. So they haven't leaked, so I'm not sure what the update is. We haven't had a leak in either of those tanks. You haven't had any leak. We have not had any okay. Leak. And they remain in secondary containment. So we, we did have a leak. We wouldn't have gone, but we haven't had a leak. Okay. So yeah. Okay. That's the update. <laughs> we haven't had. Any questions? Just a quick one. Sure. Nothing crazy. No, obviously. People see the side of trucks and they've seen that everything happened. You know, you have the air monitor trucks going around with it. Has there been any evidence to you that, that you know, this sediment kicking it up this close? Great question. Uh, I, I, it's it's yeah, so, um, yeah. so um, the, the way the air monitoring works is we set up air monitoring stations around the area of operations, so both sampling and monitoring. Uh, so, uh, to answer your question, no, we have not seen any um, uh, contaminants uh, in air through the air monitoring air sampling program. We also uh, set up badges um, with our air monitoring to look for uh, contaminants of concern. Either way, the final chloride. Those, those have always been the, uh, the keys. We see those that, that can indicate the problem. Uh, they've been all non detected uh, since the operation started. I think I asked you. Well, I want to add to that. Yes, sir. That's the cue, which is obviously the primary. Yeah. The workers all at monitor, too. So that badging or that analysis in the cue, you know, kind of well, hours or a day later, you know, they're active monitoring and they're doing the work. So the guy in the handle probe. And also, we're making sure we're monitoring all the workers to make sure they're covered too. So, we're trying to make sure the community and the workers doing the work are all covered and we're not seeing anything like that. Yeah, and you know, in, in the air monitoring that we've done over time, we do see just common basic organics yeah. that are typical in the air, but we haven't seen anything. You no, know, these, I think it's sorry, these, these sheens that we Fine. Is, there, is there evidence of exactly what they are? Yes, yeah, I mean, it's, it is it is some, it's predominantly the loom oil that was still from the, uh, the derailment. Um, there are a couple areas on uh, along the river that I mentioned earlier uh, where we know that there is some um, historic contamination. Um, so it's a combination of loom oil from the derailment, um, other chemicals from the derailment, which are largely gone now. Um, as I mentioned last summer, we saw a couple areas with low level volatiles. I don't believe we saw any of those in the fall assessment. Um, so everything we're seeing are polyaromatic hydrocarbons, uh, which are indicators of fall. Thank you. Sure. With the, uh, the back trucks themselves, does it have half a filter going down to keep anything in that would be sucked up from going out into the atmosphere? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're all filtered, so we're not. Yeah. 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 And again, they're in the air world monitoring, too. So they are. They're specifically designed with that involved because you know whatever work they're doing this site and the other site, we have someone put it here and pull it out somewhere else. So they're they're designed with that to make sure that's done. Yes. Um, I heard the word transparency in front of a lot, and I don't know who the crew this belongs to, but one day last week I stumbled on something on social media. Why don't we just pass the information off? It was a very brief statement about some workers going to be doing something. And then right away, people started to, to speculate. And and I threw my hat in the ring and said, you know, when people speculate, a lot of times it's negative. So a little more transparency would probably be a wonderful thing. And it wasn't much longer minutes. Someone updated that and found a little bit on what was going on there. And I thought that was fantastic. That is great. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You know, transparency works both ways. So, <laughs> you know, if, uh, you know, if community members um, are aware of something, you know, let us know. Well, I mean, not yeah. even you guys, yeah. or Uncle, or Cindy, or you guys. Yeah. I don't know who did that, but I thought it was wonderful. Yeah. It was a road route from the coast. I can't remember the incident, but I thought somebody jumped right on that and explained a little more, and that kind of shut that negative line down. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. I uh, do my best to avoid all the social media. Yeah, I know. Uh, but if you have any questions, again, please hit the button up there, and I'll give them a call. So they might not have the answer after that, but they'll talk to one of us. Yeah, All right, thank you. Thanks, man. Thank you, Joe.